if you have exclusively used SnapD or apt for package management you may have encountered some issues such as outdated apt packages or unexpected versions during installation additionally with SnapD, some packages might lack the latest updates or stability concerns such as the case with node.js with snapd where server and download issues are not uncommon introducing homebrew renowned as one of the best package managers for mac os and fortunately it's also available on linux well as you can see here for mac os or linux but i must say that i still have some packages slash applications installed with apt or snapd but when i want something that is reliable and know that i will have the latest packages and updates i go with homebrew all the time why is homebrew usually better firstly its unparalleled ease of use sets it apart while snapd does have a gui which is here in cuban to discover homebrew being terminal based is widely recognized for its user-friendly commands secondly in my experience homebrew consistently delivers more stable apps slash packages any issues up encounter with apt or snapd were invariably resolved by installing that certain package or application with homebrew lastly and a feature appreciated by many homebrew installs everything in its own prefix avoiding interference with other packages thus making it very versatile when downloading packages and uninstalling them so you may ask how do i install homebrew it's relatively easy from what we can see here but i actually always like to follow a specific guide which is this one which I'll leave in the description. And thanks to Alex Garnett, which was the writer for this article. And the reason I like to follow this one is because it seems to be very reliable. And every time I tried installing it via the regular install, I always seem to have some issues here and there. So we're going to follow this very user-friendly guide. Step one, we need to install a compiler environment, which depending on your system, you can follow the different commands here. But if you're using something like Ubuntu or anything Debian based, you can simply do sudo apt install build essential and that will install the compiler environment necessary. Step two, we are going to run the command, which is with curl, which we may need to install. Yes, we need to install it. We're going to use snap even though I'm always uncertain of either installing it via APT or Snap, because sometimes it doesn't work. So Homebrew, you know, fixes that misunderstanding usually. So we'll run it again with curl and there we go. It appears to have installed that script. We can check if that is true by doing an LSA and we can see right here that we have the script ready to run. It's important to note that while downloading scripts online and executing them might not be the safest practice. This guide suggests checking the script or contents by using, for example, less as the program to check what's in this install.sh. So that's what we're going to do. And you can read it uh, from top to bottom and make for yourself if you are fully comfortable on running that script after verifying the script and making sure we are fully comfortable with its contents we are going to run the actual script via the bash command or beam bash and install dot sh so there we go we're going to press enter and it seems to be installing correctly and not so correctly because it gave us an error this is something i had to investigate a little bit because when i would do sudo snap install ruby it previously worked with snapped and not apt necessarily but it doesn't seem to work right now so it appears that the preferred or the way in order to make ruby build work is by installing it directly from this repository from our van v so we'll do sudo apt install ruby build make sure to not do just ruby do ruby build and we're going to do enter 
and that should install it and there we go we're going to run the command back and we're going to press enter again and this time it should fully install and there we go it gave us next steps please run these steps since otherwise when you close this terminal it won't work so we'll just quickly do a Control shift c to copy it and run it and we're going to run this other command so yeah that should have set homebrew to your path so it runs every time you run your terminal and as you can see install homebrew dependency if you have sudo access this is what we have done already and this recommendation i always like to install it i forgot exactly what it was i think it was something related to a compiler but as you can see we have it working so after it being installed we can see that the steps after our to do brew doctor and there we go we have the output expected which is your system is ready to brew we're going to the exit we're going to reopen the terminal and we're going to do brew doctor again and there we go the installation was successfully done let's take an example and install something commonly used like neovim so in this case it will be brew install neovim so you don't have to get confused by any version or anything like that it will install the latest version for neovim and the required dependencies something else is that initially the first packages installed with homebrew may be slow but interestingly the installation process tends to speed up with subsequent packages so yeah that's a good thing to know which is that packages won't always take like one to two minutes to install somehow seems to speed up after time this seems to have installed everything quite quickly so we'll do clear and once installed we can verify that it installed it correctly by running the command neovim my bad it was mvim not actual neovim and there we go we have neovim installed in the 0.9.4 version which is the latest and greatest version for neovim